This video is brought to you by 101figurine.ro Check out 101figurine.ro to see a large assortment of action figures and statues from your favorite universes. From days of long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The legend of Voltron, defender of the universe. A mighty robot, loved by good. Feared by evil. As Voltron's legend grew, peace settled across the galaxy. On planet Earth, a galaxy alliance was formed. Together with the good planets of the solar system, they maintained peace throughout the universe. Until a new horrible menace threatened the galaxy. Voltron was needed once more. This is the story of the super force of Space Explorers. Specially trained and sent by the Alliance to bring back Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Hello and welcome back, as always my name is Laser, and today on the turntable we have a masterpiece or what I like to believe is a masterpiece, what I think is an absolutely awesome awesome collectible. We got the Soul of Chogokin GX71 Voltron or Goline from Bandai and Tamashi Nations. We're gonna have to go through everything so sit tight because it's gonna be a long one. We're gonna start off with the lines, okay, one by one. Now I know in in, in true fashion to Voltron we should start with the smaller lines with the green and the uh, red But we're gonna have to start with the black one because this one is by far the most complex of the five The black line uh, will make up Voltron's body for the most part and its head. So let's get into it Let's get a closer look. Here we go So as you can see I got them all fitted out with all the accessories and we're gonna go for each and every single one of them First off, the paint absolutely spot on to the 80s original, once again Voltron is a representation of a cartoon back from the 80s, oops sorry about that. So this is the mouth plate, again very accurate, I would like to post some pictures but everything from back in the 80s is so low resolution it would look really weird. So the mouth plate just fits inside between his teeth as you close the mouth, okay and it will stay firmly securely in place there. Alright, now let's get a better look at his mouth. You see, I opened it up all the way as you will display its uh, Voltron's face. As for the articulation, you can move the head all the way down and up. You got a neck pivot, for the most part, and a swivel as well. well let me try to open the mouth once again. You will see that there is no face right now inside. You do uh, have it equipped with the standard uh, face facial expression for Voltron out of the box. I just removed it so I can show you guys the two options you got. You got one with the mouth open, which I don't know, it's not something I would like personally to display Voltron with, but you might. So you do get another face in the box as I show you in the unboxing. Now to stick this one in, you just align the two little peg holes to the two uh, peg holes up there on top of the mouth in that blue section over there. Okay, you just align them push them in and it stays firmly securely in place like that so you can leave it on in the black line if you so desire but sometimes I it shows when you don't want it to show in line form and I don't like that the black line comes with the two rocket launchers I don't remember you're gonna have to excuse me it's been a long time since I saw Voltron but I think these were some um, shoulder mounted rocket launchers uh, for the shoulder joint we got ratchets as you can hear Okay, it, uh, you can uh, pop them in like that or you can extend the shoulder joints to get a butterfly joint which will obviously extend articulation and increase posing. For the knee, let's call it a knee joint, we got ratchets and for the paw, okay, we got a hinge with a bit of a swivel and a bit of a rocker as well which will help with posing and stabilizing. The body of this specific piece is made out of die cast while the members, okay, the, uh, the limbs are made out of plastic as well as the head and the... Uh, uh, wings on the back 
which do fold up. I got them extended. Depends on your preference how you want to pose them. But normally it would look like this, okay? You fold them up and you put them in the back. The chest piece, yes, the very iconic key of Voltron. I think it was called a key. Again, very beautifully done, accurate to the original. Now let's move on to the back. You get another uh, ratchet joint. Two actually, one for the knee and one for the hip. And an, even a an ratchet joint for the paw as well, with a swivel and a rocker as well. You also get a thigh swivel. And the legs can extend outwards a little bit as well, you know, which is more useful in robot mode than it is in lion form. You see, I got them all spread out there a little bit. There. And you can tuck them back in if you so desire. Again, ratchet joints all the way. Everything feels firmly, uh, everything feels firm, secure, not going anywhere. Very happy with the articulation on this one, especially considering it's a combinable figure. Now, you do get a bit of an ab crunch as well. Let me see if I can show you this here. It goes more forward than backwards. But it's decent, for the most part. Alright, what else did I wanted to show you? Oh yes, there is a hidden joint. I don't know if you can see this. But let's move the tail around. Okay, it goes up and down and it's on a ball peg. Um, you see, there is a hidden joint there for the back legs. This will extend the reach of the back legs so you can get them in a nice sitting position. And when you want him to stay all straight up, you just pop it back in okay it clicks into place firmly and you can also extend the torso as I'm trying to show you here here you go you get two clicks one two uh, normally you would want to keep the torso retracted while you're actually having him in robot form and when he's in lion form you can have him uh, all spread out but it, again it depends on preference and you can also use the tail here to actually lock in this mechanism in place to make sure like that see to make sure nothing goes anywhere if that is what you desire. Again, he's got a lot of hidden articulation. I recommend you guys read the manual. Really, the manual really gives you almost all the information you need. You got a bit of a swivel as well. Not too much because of the sculpt. You can see it uh, kind of hits there a little bit and I wouldn't force it because you don't want to chip the paint. But you do get a uh, weight swivel as well. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get him into uh, mm, assembly mode. Let's get him uh, into uh, robot form the black line you pop the shoulders back like so now you see you have these two little locking mechanism for the shoulders okay you want to push them in really hard unfortunately at least on mine you got to really push these guys in until you get a firm click and this is how it's supposed to look all right now for the arms itself now i didn't exactly do this the right way you pop out this little tab here and this is where the arms will fold in like so and they hide perfectly inside, you pop this piece back in and they're all hidden quite nicely and again very similar to the cartoon, I'm amazed what uh, um, Tamashii Nation was able to do to actually replicate the transformation of Voltron from the 80s cartoon now in all fairness it is pretty simple but they did do a wonderful job at recreating even the actual transformation for the robot to be authentic and again the same uh, thing for the right side as well pop it back in like so, close the tab it pops into place securely, for me it's not going anywhere and this is a theme for the entire uh, figure for the most part. And the legs, well it's simple, the legs you just get them all straight out, as straight as you possibly can because these will connect to the uh, blue and yellow, ye yellow lines forming the legs and feet. And that's it for the black line, we got them ready to transform now. You can straighten out the legs even more if so desire. It doesn't matter because you are going to use that uh, uh, articulation for uh, posing of the robot. Moving on to the um, green lion. Now again, I have him all spread out here with all his accessories. Just like the other lions, he comes with a mouth blade and two weapons for the shoulders, for the front shoulders. And again, excuse me, I don't remember from the 80s what the hell were these weapons called, okay? But I do believe they are iconic, I do believe they are accurate, I just know if the... I don't know if the paint is accurate for those specific weapons. So, first off, the back cannon folds back in, like so. You open up the mouth. Uh, you will find a tongue with uh, like a little blaster tongue which is articulated, can go up and down. We're gonna remove the blade and you can see there's a peg there which will fit in the mouth, on top of the mouth and that's how it stays firmly, securely in place. It fits perfectly, no problem at all. Now as for the head, it can go from left to right, up and down and the coolest thing ever is that it can retract inside the head or pop out 
when it pops out it gives you a better range of motion on the head which uh, will become uh, Voltron's left hand so it will become his left hand articulation and it can spin around as well now let's get rid of the weapons so I can show you the uh, legs articulation better again you got a peg there which will rotate okay that little um, silver plastic part does rotate so you can rotate it around to get it in different positions for this specific weapon it doesn't really matter all that much for the cannon like weapons like this one it does matter to get them in uh, the correct position see it spins at the base there and I'll show you at the others as well it's worth mentioning that each and every single line has a different peg hole to stick into his shoulder so keep that one in mind now for articulation the legs extend and retract back in when they are extended you get additional range of motion ball peg like range of motion which will allow you to get them into let's say cat like natural positions okay there are no ratchet joints on the small lions as you can see and the paw itself has a ankle rocker and a pivot as well moving on to the uh, center area you do get a ratchet joint which extends okay the center part extends to extend uh, Voltron's reach okay and the ratchet joint goes up and down you can swivel it around as well if you want to make the lion turn to the side if you so desire same articulation for the back legs as well you get two hinges and the paws have a uh, swivel and a rocker what are kidding? and you can um, awesome. let's get them let's try to get them into form Voltron mode shall we so first thing you got to do is uh, put the legs back in oh but one thing before we do that the tail is articulated it can go down but you only want to put it down when you're forming Voltron like so okay now this uh, tail extension here is made out of silver plastic which is like matte silver plastic doesn't really good look all that well you can take it off it's a simple ball peg um, you can leave it on when you form Voltron and you can or you can take it off as well okay it's uh, depending on your preference for the most part now the actual tail is on a ratchet joint so it stays firmly secure when we attach it to the robot and we just fold up the legs like so you can leave it retracted or extended I prefer to leave it, leave it extended because it increases the range and again we fold the shoulders up into the body and we flip the paws around so it matches the little groove inside there which I will show you later just keep in mind you gotta keep the legs um, popped inside not uh, not extended all right, there we go now let me see if I can show you the groove see there is that little groove there where you gotta get the paw and this is mostly it okay let's ex uh, extend the head as well and this is the left arm of Voltron It's now ready for transformation you can open the mouth or leave it closed up again it's depending on your taste but for the most part this one just like the black line is extremely extremely accurate to the original the most accurate we got out of the Voltron toys so far now we're gonna move on to the yellow lion as you can see I got him all spread out on the turntable with all his accessories mounted up you get a spiky blade on the right shoulder on the left shoulder you get what looks to be a rocket launcher again you're gonna have to excuse me I simply don't remember these weapons so I'm gonna give you guys a closer look obviously the mouth blade as well keep in mind that the uh, yellow lion and the blue lion are fundamentally different and they're also bigger than the green and the red again accurate to the original this is how it was in the cartoon as well so let's start off at the head we're gonna open the mouth and we're gonna remove the blade it attaches through the same peg system as before okay uh, the asymmetrical blade only applies to the yellow line and the red line of course the rest have symmetrical at the top here is where you're gonna fasten the blade and at the bottom you'll see a missile like shape which doesn't have any articulation at all left to right head motion up and down you get a, a bit of a rotation out of it as well and the head is removable if you so desire and of course you get a ratchet joint as well now this ratchet joint is very important and is very stiff because it will become part of Voltron's toe on the side we got the rocket launcher because of the peg system it can rotate as well as for the spinning wheel of death which I don't remember what it's called you can rotate this one around as well though it doesn't really make much of a difference now let's get into the uh, oh yeah by the way this is the ball peg which attaches the head again you can remove the head if you so desire now you will see that the front feet are spring loaded and they can extend even more so outwards to give you that ball peg range of motion okay so you can pose the uh, yellow line and um, let's say natural cat like positions at the knee we got a ratchet very firm ratchet joint 
As for the paw itself up and down, now I'm showing you here it does not have a uh, tilt, uh, it does not have a pivot, but it does have ankle rocking, okay? I only found this out after I did the video. So the paws on the yellow lion and on the blue lion does do have ankle rocking, keep that one in mind. The back cannon moves up and down, it doesn't hide anywhere, just like again in the original 80s cartoon. You get a uh, ab crunch, okay, an ab articulation here, about two clicks worth, which will become somewhat of a shin articulation for Voltron, which you can use or ignore, it doesn't really matter. As for the back side, you do get the tail, which goes up and down, it's attached uh, on a ball peg for the most part. You can remove it, but I wouldn't really recommend it. It can spin around, like so. And you can hide it in the body when forming Voltron, from whatever side, or either rotate it one way or the other, it doesn't really matter all that much, it doesn't make that big of a difference, uh, as far as I saw. Now as for the back legs, these are not spring loaded like the front legs, but they do pop in and out, like so, to extend range of motion. Again, ball uh, peg like uh, movement, though that's not exactly a ball peg. Ratchet at the knees, which fold in like so. The paws again have ankle rocking, but they don't have a pivot. Now, I want to show you something very interesting more in the... The, it, the lion actually has neck articulation, okay? If you look here, it is a very, very stiff joint and it moves from side to side. Now, this will become Voltron's ankle rocker and it is very important that it exists and that it's stiff because it helps stabilizing the robot a whole great uh, a, a great deal now on the back side I will show you there's a trap door there which we need to activate and undo with this button uh, this button will release Voltron's foot okay black lines foot from the yellow line but I'll show you that a tad later when we come to the transformation so fold the head back like so pop in the legs you will see they no longer pop out but if I move the head down bang they pop out all right so that's why the spring loaded mechanism is there is there okay these will pop in like so they will be locked into place firmly and securely and now we will fold the feet uh into the actual body so we get to forming Voltron's uh what was it left foot okay move the head down a little bit as well try to get it as best aligned as you can but don't worry too much about it because you can play with these articulations even after you form Voltron to get the best look you can there we go. This looks pretty legit, doesn't it? It stays firmly secure in place for the most part, and as long as you don't move the head down too much, that neck articulation, that ratchet neck, it won't pop out. As for the back legs, pop them in and retract the calves in, like so. Fold the feet. And if you got them rocked, just set them straight. There we go. Very stiff ratchet joints, which I absolutely love, because let's keep in mind that this is a die-cast figure, and it, the joints do need strength to support the actual figure. Right, that foot is done, so now we're gonna move on to the red line. Yay, the red line. You see I have him in a dynamic pose here, in a cat-like, I'm gonna jump at you or over the wall pose. This is what I tried to simulate, and it was very easy because of the increased articulation at the waist and of the actual forefeet as well. So the form of the body is a tad different from the green line, the mold itself body articulation is 100% identical, alright? As you can see here. Very nice paint application, accuracy to the original, again nothing to complain about, uh, except that the uh, weird tail. But anyway, let's open the mouth and we will remove the blade. You get that same tongue articulation as in the case of the green line, that beam like tongue. And this would be the blade, let's actually take a closer look at the blade, accurate to the original, again only the red and the uh, yellow line had asymmetrical blades and they look exactly as they did in the 80s cartoon. Now you do have a back cannon, which folds in and out like so, this is made out of die cast, ok the bodies of the lines are made out of die cast, while the legs, head uh, and tail are made out of plastic. Shoulder cannon, another shoulder cannon with a different peg, again this will not fit on any other line. And for the left side, I think this was a freeze ray, no, the blue line had freeze rays, I don't remember. Anyway, a ray beam of sorts here, which is a tad stiff, I'm trying to get it off, there we go. Okay, so you can rotate it around, which is important when posing, you know, because if you want to have the foot one way and the beam another way, you can do that as well. Let's close up the mouth, again the head retracts in and out. You get a left to right motion, like so, pretty good up and down, and you get a bit of a rotation, uh, of good rotation here as well, and it can retract in. And again, this is important because this will become Voltron's right hand, so it is important that the head is nicely articulated.
Uh, the front feet pop in and out, as in the case of the uh, other lions. Okay, so it gives you increased range of motion. Perfect for posing, as you saw there, I managed to get him in a pretty nice pose for a feline, for a cat. The paw has ankle rock and pivot. Again, uh, the yellow and the um, blue do not have pivot, they only have rock, rocking motion for the paws. The chest does extend. Okay, at the waist you do get an extension which will increase Voltron's range of motion, so I like to keep it out. Oh, my tail fell off. Don't worry about it, the tail is just attached uh, to the rest of the, well, tail on a ball pack, okay? I dislike the different colors in tail to tail, that looks just a little bit off and this is just my one gripe with the figure, okay? This tail looks fun funky. I keep it out. I keep it off. You can leave it on when forming Voltron, or you can keep it on there. It doesn't really matter. And the instructions does do stipulate this. So once again, please, I recommend read the instructions if you don't want to damage your very expensive collectible. Again, the back feet pop in and out. You get ball-like uh, ball joint movement. Okay, which will help uh, stabilizing the figure quite nicely. You fold the feet up like so. You don't have ratchets on these ones. Okay, so on the uh, red and the green line you don't have ratchets for the feet nor do they need them okay they don't collapse under their own weight so it's perfectly fine the only ratchet you find here is at the tail okay it will fall down like so and now it's ready to well assemble to the body of voltron for the most part oh and also you get the ratchet at the uh, chest there as well and a swivel now let's fold up the front feet like so pop them in they now these guys for some reason these front feet on the red line don't feel as firm as the other one but it's possible that it is my imagination playing tricks on me again uh, the whole uh, piece oozes quality for the most part okay let's fold up the feet like so you don't have to get it perfect again you can play around with it uh, later as well there we go this looks right I like to keep it extended you can retract that in if you so desire and you keep in mind you do have the swivel there at the chest uh, at the waist as well so you can we will be able to turn Voltron's hands around and that's pretty much it for the red lion now the final lion we gotta look at obviously is the blue lion and here he is on the turntable all spread out all accessories included I got him in a sitting position you can get him to sit even lower but you see that the bottom part part almost touches the ground Okay, so this I found was a pretty good position to leave the blue lion in. Obviously, let your imagination run wild. The articulation does allow you to try all sorts of different poses. So if you want to display this piece uh, in lion mode, just have the lions uh, display, uh, displayed, you can do that as well. All right, let's take a closer look. Paint, spot on, absolutely the same case as with the other lions. The body is made out of die cast and the limbs are made out of plastic. I don't know if the weapons are accurate, the shoulder weapons, okay, because I simply don't remember them, so I don't know about those, but the rest of it, to my eyes, looks absolutely uh, accurate to the original. Same type of peg system for the mouth blade. Accurate, I do remember this one, absolutely awesome. No tongue articulation for the blue one either, just like in the case of the yellow one. Head articulation up and down, side to side, and a bit of a rotation as well, and of course, that very stiff ratchet joint for the toe. Now let's remove the shoulder cannons. I think this one was a missile launcher of sorts. It rotates as well, just like uh, in the case of the other one. And you see that all the shoulder blades, all the shoulder weapons are um, painted exactly the same color. Again, I don't remember if this is accurate. It looks a tad funny. It looks a, it looks a tad funny, so if that bothers you, you can't display the lines without the shoulder weapons because you do have a place to place all of your weapons, and I'll show you that later. Spring-loaded... Um, Elbows, no, not elbows, shoulders at the front. They can uh, extend even more outward, which will increase, again, range of motion. Ball peg-like movement. Ratchet uh, at the uh, knee there. And as for the paw, up and down and rocker. Now, I failed to show you the rocker in the footage. I apologize. I only found out afterwards. But trust me, the paws do have a rocker. Now, the back cannon on the blue line has a bit of a weird locking system which most of the time forces me to manhandle it a little bit I don't like that but I think it's by design once popped inside it stays firmly secure in place you can place the sticker up in there if you so desire I don't like stickers uh, placed on my diecast figures okay it seems rather cheap for such an expensive toy but you do have the optional stickers next to the instructions if you want to use it the same chest uh, ab crunch there two or three steps and you get that neck articulation, that front body articulation from left to right, which again will become Voltron's ankle rocker. 
As for the tail, the same case as in uh, the uh, yellow lion, you have uh, the tail on the ball peg so it can move up and down, you can rotate it around and obviously you're gonna want to hide it in the body of the actual lion for transformation, unless you wanna make him all weird like, like he's growing tails out of his knee. All right, let's see, we got a ratchet joint here at the knee, once again, up and down for the toe and the rocker as well. You wanna fold them in. Okay, they do go in quite nicely. Nothing hits anything, you know, there's no rubbing parts on parts, so you don't need to worry about actually smudging the paint or scratching it. Okay, as you can see, everything goes in firmly, securely in place. Nice quality control, I gotta say, by Bandai Tamashinations. Um, then again, it is a pretty expensive piece, so yeah. Pop in the back legs, like so. And just rotate them up. You don't have to do this a very specific way, okay? You know how it's supposed to look, right? So, yeah. It's not very complicated. After you do it once, you're gonna get the hang of it. So don't worry about it too much. Alright, as for the front part, again, we gotta move the head up first. Through that ratchet joint. So we form the foot. Like so. Okay, yeah, this looks good. And now if we pop in the shoulders... They will stay firmly secure in place and not pop out. If we move the head down, they will pop out. And again, move the feet back, move the calves in, and try to get that foot-like position, like so. Keep the toes extended. I mean, don't retract them in on themselves, the actual paws. Then it would look kind of funny and not accurate to the original. Like so. And straighten out the paw. And you're all good to go. Oh, there is one thing I forgot to tell you guys. Oh, damn, my bad. So, on the bottom of these feet, you will be able to pull out a heel of sorts, a metal heel, which I will show you in a second. Okay, so here, uh, get your fingernail up in here, grab the heel and pull it out. This is made out of die cast, so it's pretty hard to get it out. Okay, I kind of chipped my nail, but you, if you're collecting figures, you know that sometimes happens. So pull out the heel. Okay, this will increase stability. Now on the back side, you will see you got a small little tab here. Pull it down and push this one down inside until it firmly secure, uh, clicks in place. You will hear it. If you want to release that one, because other, uh, you got to uh, move this uh, leg around and push this button. Yes, push this button. This will release it, but you got to get your finger in there to pull it out. Okay, it won't poop, pop out like that. And we're going to do the same thing for the yellow line as well, since I forgot. So again, pull out this tab like so. And push this down until it clicks, firmly locked into place. Now finally, let's form Voltron. Ah, I've been waiting for this one. So, get your uh, black lion, start with whatever foot you want to. I recommend you keep this button pressed down. In the instructions, it tells you just force it in there until it clicks. It's a bad idea. I think you're gonna scratch the paint or might damage the figure. It's better to keep this thing pressed down, like so. Okay, wiggle it into place gently and let it go. It locks into two positions, so it's firmly secured in place. It's not going anywhere and you will have the knee ratchet joint as well. So once again, get your foot. You can extend the leg as well at the hip, so you don't rub against the other foot and scratch your paint. Keep the button pressed down, pull it in. Once, uh, it's, in full, what, once it's fully into place, release the button on the back so it locks in like that. There you go. You can extend the legs, you know, at the hips again. Try to get them in whatever pose you so desire. Keep in mind to always use that ankle rocker for uh, increased stability. Now, for the actual arms, this is a far simpler, uh, simpler process than for the feet. Then again, the feet do need the increased uh, uh, locking mechanisms because they're heavy, die cast heavy. Is, for the arms, you simply, well, push them into place. That's all. And now you will get a, um, a hinge there. You will get a, whatchamacallit, a racket, ratcheted hinge at the shoulder. Okay, it goes up and down and out uh, side to side. And I will show you in a couple of seconds. All right, we form feet and legs. We got body, we got uh, arms. Now, all that's left is to form the head. Perhaps the most iconic part to the Voltron transformation. So again, for the hands, just pop them in there. Simple as that. So leave the head down, like so. And now pull open the mouth, like that. And there you go, Voltron now has his head. Oh, the ears as well. Pop out the ears as well, and there you go. Voltron is now formed. Obviously, you do have head articulation, so you can uh, move it from left to right, up and down. It's got a little bit of a pivot as well. I'll try to show you, here we go. All right, so you can position the head in many different ways. Ratchet at the um, shoulder there, 
you can open up the hand, you can retract and you can put them back in. You already know all the articulation you're getting because you saw what the lions can do. Okay, now let me try to get him in that iconic pose like he's gonna form Blazing Sword. Okay, move up the hand, rotate, use the swivel. I'm being very gentle with it because, again, it is a very expensive collectible. I don't want to break anything. There we go. Well, that's some kind of a form Blazing Sword, but don't worry about it because we actually got the Blazing Sword and I'm gonna show you that just a tad later. You can rock from side to side at the waist there. It goes pretty far down as far as an up crunch goes. Uh, unfortunately, not so much backwards and I'm not in the mood to force it so I'm just gonna leave it like it is oh damn I forgot about the wings so he wasn't complete sorry uh, you fold out the wings you pull them out and you rest them on the black lion's feet like so okay and now Voltron is finally uh, formed completely formed all right let's move him back a little bit so he looks more natural there we go and well that's pretty much it again the hands can go out from side to side as well you can use uh, that uh, extended range for the hands, okay, if you pop out the heads of the two little lions. Now let's uh, equip him with a weapon, yeah, what is Voltron without a weapon? You get uh, ratchet joints at the uh, hip and at the knee as well, you can use the shin joint like I told you earlier as well, if you so desire. Those shin joints though look a tad loose to me, I wouldn't play around with them too much. If I swivel, like I showed you in the case of the black lion, you can use that one as well. And if you extend the legs, the feet won't uh, hit against each other. Now, what is that blade? Where did I put it? Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Blazing Sword, the most iconic weapon for Voltron. It's pretty big, it's painted silver, uh, glossy silver. Now I know that is accurate to the original, but it looks a tad cheap. I don't know, always for me, shiny silver paint looks a tad cheap. But anyway, it attaches to the... Alliance mouth through the same peg system as the mouth blades. Now this is the only weapon which doesn't stand too securely in place because it's big and it's heavy. It's made out of plastic, it's not die cast but it's still pretty big and heavy. So you gotta wiggle it, wiggle it in there and then perhaps use the rest of the lion's mouth to further secure the blade in place. Once you do that, don't worry about it, it stays good enough in place as you can see. And now Voltron has his legendary blazing sword. There we go. Uh, I think this uh, tries to emulate a little bit the pose after he got the blade, after he formed the blazing sword. Okay, I didn't do the best of job at it, but I was only playing with it for like 15 seconds. Now let me give you a really fast close up, so you can see how the robot looks. Pretty big blazing sword. You might think, damn, it's too big, but I did watch some footage of the actual uh, cartoon, and it, it was that big. It was a huge, huge sword for Voltron. Now, there's one more thing I didn't show you. Now, this stand you get, uh, which can hold all of the accessories, as you can see here. It comes into five parts. Okay, it's very simple to snap on together, just like Legos, even simpler than Legos, so there's no point in me showing you how to assemble the base. A three-year-old could do it. You get these two one-handed swords, which attach at the hilt, forming a bigger sword, okay? Now, for the life of me, I don't remember these swords on the cartoon. I only remember the blazing sword and the shield, okay? But you do get those, so I'm guessing they were in the cartoon if we got them. All of the weapons of the lines, all of their shoulder weapons uh, can be attached on this base via their peg system, okay? So they will stay firmly, securely in place. You also get the small tray with more weapons put on there. As you can see, they're not going anywhere. Super nice of um, Tamashii Nations to include this. And, f oh, oops, sorry. Finally, the shield. I do remember this one, the iconic shield, the Voltron. Now, you might be wondering, how do we equip this one? Because I don't see... Yeah, well, you get this small little thing. Okay, this hilt-like thing, which attaches like so. And it has two swivels on it, so it's going to be easy for you to actually attach it to the lion's mouth and get it into a decent uh, defending position. I'm going to try to show that to you in a second. But first, you also get this gold lion emblem. Okay, you can replace the standard Voltron one. Some of you might remember him as Golion Japanese style or Voltron, which was the UK slash US style, like I remember him. All right, so I got them all out on the turntable here. Sorry about the bad lighting, but here you go with the shield and with the sword as well. So I guess it's mostly time for conclusions. There's not much else to say, right? So let's take it one by one. First, let's talk accuracy accuracy of the sculpt. And for the most part, I have no gripes. As far as uh, Voltron collectibles are concerned, this is one of the most accurate 
combinable figure we have ever got accurate to the 80s cartoons of course i'm not talking just about the sculpt i'm also talking about the paint application how everything looks together how everything combines together it is um for the most part very very accurate quality of the materials used there's a lot of die cast here bodies mainly the lion bodies are made out of die cast and the rest is made out of plastic so i am happy overall uh with the quality of the materials used top notch no complaints at all uh, so we talked about paint, sculpt, materials, uh, let's talk about the actual uh, transformations, okay? And for the most part, I have no gripes with this one. Usually when you get a combinable figure, you have to worry about stuff falling off, not fitting properly, uh, falling off your figure and so on and so forth. Once you combine this guy properly, he feels very solid, very hefty, and not only because of the die cast, because he is a very heavy figure, which is why my turntable, as you can see, barely can move him okay everything feels solid i never have that worry that something's gonna pop off fall off it doesn't connect properly it doesn't hold firmly into place bandai tamashi nations did a fantastic job at this as far as articulation is concerned the lines are absolutely top notch and in voltron for in, line, in a robot form it is good it could have been better okay but considering it's a combinable figure i am very happy with the articulation with got. could have been a little bit better but there's no reason to complain here either so overall from my humble point of view this is the best hands down the best voltron collectible we have ever gotten you are paying through for it through the nose it is 300 dollars msrp but it's worth every single penny from my point of view if you want the best voltron collectible then this is it okay accuracy even of the transformation okay you get even accurate transformation of the lines into the robot you can't really ask for more than this materials paint application transformation how the robot feels everything in hand oozes quality from its heft to how sturdy it is absolutely love this figure and i cannot recommend it enough if you got any feedback for us please let us know in the comment section down below as always my name is ben Lazar. thank you guys for watching like favorite share and subscribe if you enjoy our content and i'll see you again next time and i'm gonna leave you with a final close-up of Voltron. Bye guys, I'll see you next time. Acest video v-a fost adus de către 101figurine.ro. Intră și tu acum pe 101figurine.ro pentru a vizualiza o multitudine de statuete și figurine din universurile tale preferate.